So this is a game... Mm, I didn't play this on Genesis, but I've been aware of it since I was a teenager at least, and played it a few times back then and just revisited it numerous times over the years because it's basically in a lot of collections and on a lot of platforms and also being associated with treasure and just generally being a fan favorite game is something that you know it's just is a subject that comes up especially when you like uh, running guns like the metal slug and contra series this is often another point of comparison and for a long time i actually didn't like gunstar heroes i thought it sucked my opinions on treasure have changed a lot over the years, and I'm not going to go into a whole speech about it now, but basically I thought the game felt janky and weird. It was too complicated with the amount of variety and the different weapon switching. Picking up items is weird. Like, that's something that you never get away from, how hard it is. Uh, like, they made it technical. Uh, they added technical difficulty just to getting like a uh, hit point or recovery, just picking up a health item. Uh, but like I said, my opinion has changed a lot. And uh, these days I see it as an incredibly original game that probably is one of the best run and guns of all time up there with Hardcore Uprising um, and the best of the Contra series. The weapon variety is, is part of what makes it so genius. All the weapons are fun to use, but require different skills. And um, because of the combination system, you can swap a lot more freely and improvise more when you're replaying the game. Just adds a lot of depth to it. Uh, there's also the two character types, which do the same thing. Um, so we're just going to play on normal now. I've tried out hard a little bit, and it is hard. And I feel like that's probably the the true way to play. It's probably on hard, and I might try to do a clear of that later, but since I've never won CC the game, and I've been practicing a little bit, I'd like to start with normal. So I think it's pretty feasible that we should do it today, but this is on, uh, it's on the long side. So uh, if the first attempt goes poorly, then uh, we might not do too many more. Good thing is a lot of the trouble spots are early in the game, um, so I just sort of try to arrange the stages in a way that any of the places where I might game over happen as early as possible so I can just do a quick reset. That's why I'm going to start with orange instead of uh, pink like most people would. So first of all, we have uh, a character select. It, it's presented as a shot type select. This is just a weird thing about Gunstar Heroes. I actually kind of it reminds me of Diojo, which I was just playing, which has a weird select. So you can play on P1 side or P2 side, and that determines the color of your character. Pretty insignificant, but whatever, it's there. The thing is, the characters are named red and blue, so that you would think that the color is the person. But actually, red is free shot, blue is fixed shot, and red can be red or blue, and blue can be red or blue. So... <laughs> You, so just to keep things sim simple, since I'm playing Fix Shot, which is the character named Blue, I'm also going to play on P2 side, which is blue, colored. For a starting weapon, this doesn't matter too much if you're just trying to do a one credit clear. It does matter when you're uh, credit feeding through the game or playing it normally, as we would back in the day, just beating the game, so to speak. And this one does have infinite continues, and your starting weapon is going to affect every time uh, you continue. That's how you're going to be reset with, and because there are checkpoints at like bosses and, and other difficult parts, you got to think about what you're doing here. Uh, it's not going to be a big deal here, but just to play it safe, I'm going to take homing since that's kind of the or sorry chaser because that's the safest weapon to use. So force is like a machine gun, lightning is like a laser. Chaser is homing, and I think Flame is just Flame. I'm playing the Japanese version just because. Uh, I, as far as I know, there's no difference between the English and Japanese versions, and the text in the English version is so minimal that you don't really get much story anyway. So we're going to start with Orange, the flying battleship stage. This is a little bit harder a starting point than Pink. Um... Black and 
green are both pretty risky to start with because essentially you get a health upgrade after each stage. Uh, sort of like Mega Man X, except you don't actually have to go and find the upgrades. So whatever stage you play last, you're going to have the most starting health for. So you want to start with something that's going to be easy. Um, pink is definitely the easiest stage. Orange, the only real difficulty on normal mode is the boss fight. It's actually one of the, uh, the more fun boss fights, and it's not that troubling. It's just that every once in a while something goes wrong, and I just uh, quickly game over. So this stage, um, that's just to say, is a little bit less predictable, and that's why I'd rather have it first. Uh, green and black are even more unpredictable, but on those ones, I'd prefer to have the extra health. Alright, so this is another really uh, fun stage segment. The part where you climb up at the beginning is kind of boring. It's, it's actually like kind of a good warm-up when you're starting the game. Uh, which is another reason that this makes a good starting stage, because nothing is really happening in that section. So you can just remember which button is jump. But this part, uh, you get your first chance to play with the grappling or the catch and throw mechanics, which are, is one of the best parts of Gunstar Heroes, one of the things that really makes it stand above other running guns. Something that, for instance, Contra series never even touched on. Metal Slug does have some melee combat, but it's <laughs> janky. And not doesn't have nearly the depth as Gunstar. Gunstar actually has a pretty decent move set, which is part of what also makes the game take some time to learn and really appreciate. So for weapon combinations, I'm going to be trying to use uh, I'm going to use Flame Chaser for a lot of the game, uh, but I'm going to mix it up some just to keep things interesting for myself. And I, I could do... I'm kind of tempted to do double force. Because that's a pretty powerful weapon and will work it against orange. But I'm not going to take it because... Basically then I won't have a chaser. So when I want to switch to flame chaser, I need to rely on getting... Two drops in a row that are correct. You know, a chaser and a flame. All the weapon drops are random. As far as I understand. And so that will also add some... Uh, dynamism to repeated playthroughs that you don't necessarily know that you're going to get what you want to when you want to. And I think that the way that most players would probably adapt to that is just take one weapon and keep it for the entire game. But this game is really designed so that some weapons suck in certain situations, <laughs> and especially uh, certain combinations of character and weapon uh, just become surprisingly hard to use at times. Homing Chaser is pretty safe. Or, uh, Star Chaser. Sorry, it's homing. It's just two homings. Chaser is homing. Um, this is a pretty safe weapon. It's medium power. It's not super weak, but it's on the weak side. And the homing is pretty accurate. Also, because it is rapid fire with a lot of projectiles, it does well against... Uh, groups of small enemies, which some of the homing weapons struggle with. So for orange, I usually just hang from the wing until he gets close to me or drops near me. And then I kick up, which usually will stun him. Uh, hit stun is a big part of boss fights in this game. Oh, I got thrown off. When you uh, fall there, you take 20 damage. Oh, I got knocked off again. See, that's why I say this battle can be a little unpredictable. Because he grabbed me a couple times I wasn't expecting. But yeah, hit stun and grappling are pretty important parts of the boss fights. And, you know, another thing that almost makes this feel like a beat-em-up combined with a running gun. So when you beat a Sage, you get a full life refill, plus a 20 HP uh, upgrade. 
So now we've got 120, and we're just going to go play pink so that we can get another health upgrade. It's interesting that the soldiers at the beginning here that are, like, beating up on these houses, uh, you don't actually get points for killing them. Like, all these other grunts, the ones that infinitely respawn, they do give you points. But the ones that are just uh, destroying that house at the beginning, those apparently are not considered enemies. Yeah, so here's an instance where um, I don't want any of these weapon pickups. If I got a flame here, I would have taken it, but the extra chasers do nothing for me, and I don't want force chaser. I think that's one of the weaker weapons, uh, just because it's uh, all the all the force based weapons are kind of like middle grounds. It's like the balanced weapon. So, Force Chaser is, like, not as good at homing as the other Chaser weapons, and also not as powerful. So, this is a trivially easy but weird boss fight. The way that uh, it uses physics, sort of, to recoil from your shots. Uh, it's never hard, but with certain weapon types, such as if I had taken... Um, like double force or something, or uh, double lightning, it becomes kind of annoying. Alright, so here is uh, Flame Chaser. So this is the weapon that is uh, it's what I'm going to use for most of the game. The way it works is once you fire the projectile, you can freely control it with the D-pad. And with the free character... It's actually kind of difficult to use this because as you control the fireball, you also move around the screen, so it's hard to dodge and aim at the same time. So this is this weapon in particular is why I'm using fixed here. I think that uh, different weapons definitely work better or worse with different characters. However, I'm not going to take it just yet. I just wanted to show it off. Um, it's a little bit early. And we'll just stick with Star Chaser for a bit longer, because it makes this stage more brainless. Also, my thumb gets tired with all the aiming of the flame projectile. You'll see why later in the game. So, I'll give myself a break for now. <clears throat> we do want to get it before the end of this stage, and in the off chance that we get unlucky and don't see another flame, then we hope to see one in green, basically. Yeah, so I missed that bird, didn't get a second drop. It really gave me a lot of forces. Alright, so there's another bird coming up, which is why I sort of jump one at a time. Okay, that's unusual that the heart landed on the bird itself. That was lucky. Usually that bird, you know, depending on when you shoot it, of course, tends to drop the life items down on these lower levels of the pyramid, which are hard to drop down to without also dropping off the screen and taking 20 damage. So, I think the smart strategy there is just ignore those uh, if they do drop that way. You don't really need the extra health for this stage. So this guy is a pretty trivial fight if you have one of the stronger weapons, like flame lightning, double lightning, or Flame Chaser. Uh, because I'm using Star Chaser, he might get a chance to regenerate his health. It just depends on what attacks he does. I'm not really worrying about not taking damage here. He doesn't normally uh, do all those ground attacks. So here we've got this cool dynamic segment where you slide down the pyramid. And this is actually, it's pretty simple, especially with this weapon. But something I think that's cool about this part is that you've got enemies that are shooting diagonally at you. This is essentially diagonal scrolling. Only elsewhere seen in Cheatarius. But you've uh, got this diagonal scrolling, but you jump up still. So timing the jump over the lasers that they fire might seem a little unnatural because of that. Oh, come on! Ah, oh, you're going to give me three chasers? 
Even a lightning would have been better. Alright, well, Star Chaser is always safe, so... Even if I do have to fight green with it, it's not the end of the world. We've got a ways to go before there, though. So this part, I try to kill these beehives. Again, this is just putting a lot of effort into getting health pickups that I don't really need. But, yeah, if you don't kill this beehive here, then it's going to get in the way when you're trying to get the health pickup on the next screen. And then preferably kill this one before the bird. Now the bird comes in. Yeah, that arm sometimes hits it and kills it. Classic treasure. Uh, you'll get one health item when it does that, but you really want to shoot it before that happens so that you get two. You get up to three health items per bird, I think, but I don't know how to get all three of them on all of them. Uh, usually shooting it once and then kicking it once will give you two. Oops, trying to do jump kick and did a wall jump instead. For this boss, again, I'm not really worrying about not taking damage because the fight is very short. But uh, jump kicks, which is uh, just done by jump and jump again, do a lot of damage. And that's exactly the kind of thing that, when you're new to the game, you might not think, like, oh, I really should be using the jump kick to attack, like... Especially, so, when you're playing as blue, the fix shot type, it's a jump kick. When you're playing as red, or uh, free shot type, it's a belly flop that doesn't even necessarily look like an attack. So, I think when I first played it, I didn't really process that you're supposed to be using that offensively. So we didn't get a flame yet, so we're going to have to hope to get one in green stage. This is absolutely one of the best running gun stages ever designed. Uh, it's the auto-scroller, but with a floor, a ceiling, with vertical segments where you go on either wall. Uh, tons of enemies playing off of the whole floor and ceiling thing. Also being able to be on both sides uh, makes it more compatible for co-op, which this game works really well with. And uh, yeah, you've got this interesting double jump. Oh, come on, stop giving me force. They are killing me with these weapon drops. <laughs> what is with this RNG? All right, we've only got like two more drops before the fight with green, so. I may have made things harder for myself by dropping that flame earlier. I can't believe I've got almost nothing but chaser and force drops. I... Uh, there's a possibility that they're weighted. I have no idea, really. But yeah, Star Chaser works well for the stage itself. Sleeper car. Alright, so I'm going to stay on the ground here because that's where the birds are going to be. It's going to be one more. Um, I'm not sure how to get a second heart out of that first one. Um... It might just be you have to deal a whole lot of damage, and it's hard to do because you can't do your jump attacks in this stage. Alright, I'll, I'll take lightning. Wait, no, no. There we go. Got it. <laughs> See, that's what I mean about, like, they made it technical just picking up items. Because you have to uh, press down and attack to do that. But anyway, now we've got Flame Chaser. This does a ton of damage, and... It also cancels enemy attacks. Uh, so lasers, bombs, etc. can be erased. This thing feels like basically you're controlling a giant eraser. If you don't uh, touch the D-pad at all while holding the shot button, it will just loop around in circles like that until it finds a target. 
and then it will sort of after or adjusting for the target, it will then return to the circles. Uh, you can use that to damage bosses sometimes. I might uh, do it for 7 force if I have to. Here we go. Tiger Force, Eagle Force, Blaster Force. Hopefully we don't see Eagle Force. I hate that one. Urchin Force. Crab Force. And the Mysterious Seventh Force. Which isn't named for some reason. Or I skipped past it. <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> Alright, so you always start with Soldier Force. Um, as far as I know. And here on normal difficulty, you will fight five of the forces, meaning you get to skip two. And it will be random which ones. Even if you're on the harder difficulties and have to fight all seven, the order you're going to see them in is still random. Alright, see how quickly um, Flame Chaser killed Soldier Force. That's why we're using it for this fight. So this is the worst one, and this is where actually a game over is possible. If I get trapped in a weird way by this one. If you get trapped in between his tail and the wall, you can get stun locked there. And there probably is some way to escape from it, but I've never figured it out. So here's a place where I'm just going to... I'm not going to try to manually control it. Oh, unless it's missing completely. Alright, what I'm going to do is just fire repeatedly. I already took a couple hits. Actually, yeah, here we go. This is Gunstar Heroes. All different strats, depending on what weapon you're using. So I'm actually able to cancel his bullets by timing my shots to pass through them and then hit the boss. Alright, Urchin Forest is a pretty easy one. random how many bounces it will do and which side it will stop on so just don't push your luck and yeah once it gets down to 1500 HP pretty much every boss in the game has a silent phase transition at a certain level of HP where they'll introduce a new attack pattern and uh, crab force is very typically the one I see last I don't know if it's like RNG based on uh, when you or like seated when you start the game or something so that if it's your first credit you always see the same order could be but I rarely see Tiger Force and I don't see Eagle Force that often either it could be that or it could just be weighted also I just realized that uh, these attacks that Crab Force are firing count as projectiles that Flame Chaser can destroy, so it's even more overpowered than I thought. Totally demolishes Crab Force as well. I don't think that it can delete the boomerangs and bombs that Soldier Force fires, but I didn't try it either. That's nice and clean through the first three stages. Now into Black's Dice Palace. Alright, so I'm just going to switch over to regular homing. Another cool thing about the double weapon system, or the weapon combo system, is that unlike, say, Kirby 64, where once powers are combined, they're combined permanently, here you can switch back to one of the single powers without uh, dropping the second one. That is one hell of a bullshit event. I tried to jump kick that guy. He jump kicked me and knocked me into the pit. <laughs> 20 HP down the drain. But yeah, sometimes, uh, like I said, because... Uh, Chaser, Flame, or Flame Chaser is a little bit more input intensive to use. Sometimes, if I don't need it, I just switch to one of the other weapons. Either Chaser, Standalone, or Flame, depending on the situation. So even, even once you 
or even if you do settle on one weapon for the entire game, that's still really three weapons that you have equipped and can choose from. Well, unless it's a double type, in which case then it really is just one, because the double types are all better than what they're based on. Alright, so here... Uh, these are the other two best weapons. Uh, Laser Chaser, which is faster than Flame Chaser, doesn't do quite as much damage, and sometimes will lock on to the wrong spot, um, which is only a shortcoming, whereas Flame uh, Chaser, you have manual control, so you don't have to worry about that. And then the other one is Lightning Sword. And this is a really cool weapon because it also deletes projectiles and is very strong, short range. I think just for fun, we're going to take this through Black Slice Phallus. If I game over on this credit, I'll, I'll do safer strats next time, but at this point, I, especially in these first four stages, I don't think there's much risk. I practiced the game for a few hours this week. Alright, Black's Dice Palace. This is one of the most unique and memorable parts of the game. And one of the places where treasure is really starting to show their signature style. So why have a stage select when you can have a game board with 20 different stages on it and make it totally random which stage the player gets? So yeah, we're, we're just going to stick with uh, Lightning uh, Sword. The only other viable weapon, or one that I uh, like, is Double Lightning. This is very powerful, it's accurate, and is fully long range. Uh, it's not quite as powerful as the Lightning Sword, and it doesn't destroy bullets, but for free type, that's probably what I'll use. And then another decent one is this um, Lightning Force. This is a bit weaker than Double Lightning, and it takes longer to aim because of the transitional frames of animation, but it can also sort of cover a spread area, which can make it useful against uh, the huge armies of popcorn enemies that you see in this game. Some people prefer it to double lightning. I don't. I don't really use that one. Alright, so we got a lucky roll to start with. And another good roll. Three. Minion Soldier. This is uh, actually one of the harder... Uh, spaces on the dice pal or on the dice board. The thing about the dice palace is, it's a lot of stages, and the first time you play them, it's going to be pretty confusing. The first few times you play this part, it's going to be pretty confusing, because uh, everything sort of has different rules to it. It's not just a straight up boss rush, even though it sort of is. Uh, but actually, most of them are very easy. Uh, once you've seen them before. Minion Soldier is one where it, it's not hard, but it still is harder than a lot of them. The only really bad one is this no gun that's straight above me. We'll see if we get there. Alright, this is this one again, this is just free. Like this one isn't even a pretend challenge. Well I guess it's a it's a time bonus. So the way that score generally works in this game is in bonuses, and your overall score is meaningless. There's no one-ups, and there are places... Like, you can break it by just letting enemies infinitely spawn and never moving on through the game. Uh, but individual score bonuses are a way of just giving you a grade for subsections of the game. Like speed killing. Uh, that's... Machine... This, again, this is like Minion Soldier. It's like medium difficulty insofar as I can get hit during it, but not actually hard. It's just kind of random, and with this weapon, I gotta be careful. But yeah, nice and powerful. Kill them quickly. It's 
far as I know, there's no way to control your di dice roll, but I could be totally wrong. I haven't looked it up or anything. I've just experimented and it seems to be totally random. It's not like Cuphead where you can game it. How long is this going to take to kill him? <laughs> I've never seen that particular juggle happen. Yet another one. Trivially easy. Even if you don't have a weapon that goes through walls, you can actually melee those guys through walls. You can use your slide kick and hit them. Alright, another item room. Nice. That's lucky. And yeah, you know, we're not going to mess with weapons. I guess I'll just show off. Uh, this is double flame. It's longer than the normal flame. And when you release it, it actually fires a stream of fire. Normal flame doesn't do that. Uh, double flame is decent. If you wanted a different weapon to use, it works pretty well. But flame chaser and uh, lightning sword basically have the same strengths as it, but also delete bullets. It's not as powerful as the lightning sword. Uh, Alright, so this one can be annoying, more so than hard. It's going to follow the path that it just drew. So you have to watch carefully to see where it's going. And sometimes it's better to just stand out of the way. Oh, really? It's going to hit me through the floor? Um, I think that's going to... Oh, shoot. I thought it was, gonna... it was going diagonal. I missed it, and I missed where that one was going to. This... That boss is one place where if you're using Lightning Chaser, it does not correctly lock onto the boss. And that can be really annoying if you're using Free Type, because with Fixed Type, you can stand up and aim down. You cannot do that with Free Type. No one. Okay. No curry and rice for now. <clears throat> Super Gondola. Another. This is like uh, one of the medium difficulty ones. Like. Probably take some damage on this, but I won't die. Oh. Didn't expect that to happen. I was trying to catch that bomb. I think I did, but also fell in the pit. No, no, no! Oh, this is getting ridiculous! I've never seen that happen before. Where it destroys so much of the ground immediately. Uh, terrible RNG. Alright, come on, I need you to move over here. I can't make that jump. Oh, this is annoying. I've never seen this happen where it destroys the entire floor, basically. I... Uh, I'm not used to actually having to pay that much attention during this fight. Is it going to come over here? Or is it going to, like... Alright, let's see if I can just get it with laser. Alright, that's where the... Once again... Switching to the single weapon types can come in handy. Cover one of the shortcomings of whatever your double weapon is. Alright, so here we can either go straight to the boss, which would be great. If we get a 1, take an item, which would also be great. Or we can get the way back and be sent back to the beginning. So if you do the math on it, I think there's a 50% chance that you'll hit the way back. Um, 
every time you play this, so you should kind of just take it for granted that you might have to just just assume that you're gonna have to play almost every space on the dice palace. Here we go. So unfortunately, I took an insane amount of damage against Super Gondola, so there is a chance that this is a game over, especially if I hit curry and rice on the second time. Alright, that's exact same first two rolls as last time. Lucky. And I don't remember what this is, but it's easy. I think it's melon bread. Uh, it's called melon pan in the Japanese version, melon bread in the uh, English version. Uh, means the same thing. I actually had to look it up. I don't know why it's used to name that boss, but it's a type of like cake, like a small little um, sweet dessert. Japanese, obviously. It looks like a melon. It's not like melon flavored or anything. It has sort of a crust that looks like a musk melon. All right, come on. Two thirds chance we don't hit curry and rice. No curry and rice. Yes. All right. And you can't get the way back again, so. All right. Aberenbo Gel. I have no idea what that name means. Didn't look that one up, and kind of sounds like nonsense. This one is, again, free. I think melon bread does something if you let it hang around for long enough. Uh, the gel I, just kind of bounces back and forth. It can hit you. It can land on you. Alright, maybe an item. Uh, I think that item space, uh, I missed it. But I think that one has two hearts in it. It's alright though. Black is an easy boss. I should be able to do it just fine with only 40 HP. So, now the boss fight itself is... A variation on a dice board. Treasure never did anything halfway. So this fight, he's going to roll die and take steps according to what the value is. And that's going to determine what attack he fires. Each one fires from the spaces of the color. One, two, three, so that's going to be green, which is uh, diagonal lasers, or bullets. Uh, all four of the attacks have a safe spot, and they're all pretty obvious safe spots, too. Red is, like, the hardest one, and it's not hard. Yeah, so... If you have a weaker weapon, the fight will go on for twice as long, but that's by far the easiest boss fight in the game, in terms of stage bosses. Then it's got this little gag at the end, if there's a fake gem that can kill you. Classic treasure prank game design, love it. Oh yeah, there's a move I haven't really used. The uh, slide tackle. That move sucks. Well, I don't know if it's really functional in combat, because it's half circle forward shot, which means it's fairly difficult to pull off consistently, but what does happen is I accidentally pull it off sometimes, and, uh, you know, like when I'm trying to sweep down, basically, I will accidentally do one of those slide tackles, and that can be big trouble. Anyway, yeah, he doesn't throw the real gem until you stop hitting him. <laughs> So now we got all four gems, and uh, just like a Mega Man game, we're going to move on to the Wily stages now. Stages 5, 6, and 7. And we do continue getting the 20 life upgrades at the end of each of these stages. So we're at 180 now, and you're at 220 going into the final stage. Alright, stage 5. This is the part... This is not my favorite part of the game. Um, so I'm going to stick with the lightning sword, I think. I don't know. I could do double lightning 
I feel like though, if I die, I'm gonna be really mad that I did that. I'm trying to think if it's gonna hurt me on the boss fight. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna go with the lightning sword. Stick with what I know. No, now I got hit. <laughs> anyway, we'll do double lightning. Keep it interesting. So this stage, so basically the way that all the other stages up to this point have worked is that there's sort of an intro with these grunts attacking you, and then it leads into some set-piece battles that are characteristic of the stage. And uh, this stage is just one endless grunt fight. Like, it just goes on and on. And we're going to go through all four colors of grunts, plus the silver ones that are always there. They're barely even different from each other. I don't know if on harder difficulties maybe there are more differences, but the stage is just kind of boring, and it's mostly an endurance test. Free shot type is better here, because obviously you can move and shoot, so you don't have to stop and allow other or allow enemies to come on screen or, or continue spawning, but either way. It's a long, long road. You can throw those flying platforms. That's pretty huge to know, because those things can be very annoying. They will just stick with you until you kill them. And spawn those floating bombs. Which, uh, the black bombs can't be thrown back. The skull bombs can be. Most of the boxes here have uh, hearts in them. Usually it's only for 10 HP, but I generally stop to get them. There are going to be lots of bombs tossed in this stage. That's one of the things that keeps it exciting, at least. And we're also going to fight the commanders of each type, like the pink one just there. I didn't point those out earlier, but that's another recurring enemy type. Very simple mid-boss. And actually now might be the time to get back to Flame Chaser. I don't remember if I even like using it on this stage, but... I don't want to get stuck. Um, well, it's, it'll help with the boss fight. I actually don't really need it for any of the game. Although it is really helpful in uh, the final stage. <sighs> Just trying to get the platform. But yeah, I've experimented a lot with the weapons. It's, as I mentioned, one of the most fun parts of the game, but also helps... Uh, you know, you learn the game that well, and then it adds variety and, and even more replayability to it, because each time you make different weapon decisions, and you find out which weapons definitely do and don't work for certain sections. It's not always what you expect. Like here, I would have assumed that using Flame Chaser and the Fixed Shot type would really be a struggle. Because you have to stop to aim it. But it kills enemies so quickly that you can actually keep up surprisingly well. And when you just fire it straight forward, it will penetrate and kill any grunts ahead of you. It's strong enough to do that. Yeah, it can just dominate any enemy that takes hits done. But I like throwing bombs. Yeah, we're, we're sticking with this. Not going to switch weapons again. We will switch for stage 7. Where hopefully we'll get a pick of what we like. Actually, if I wanted to be really safe, I would try to end this stage with a lightning-based weapon. I might have to... I might think about doing that. Uh, just because the lightning-based weapons are much better in stage 7... Or, sorry, stage 6. It's coming up next, not stage 7. Alright, so I think that... It's either the last or the second to the last of the flying platforms... 
And now, yeah, it is the last, because now we've got the walkers instead. I will say, this stage used to really bore me, but... It, uh, contrary to expectations, as I got better at the game, I enjoy it more. Because I'm better at using the melee and uh, throwing bombs and stuff, which keep it more interesting. Alright, so I think there's uh, five of those walkers. Four or five. And you want to kill them quickly, because they will just keep walking towards you and do a lot of damage when they run into you. I think that, yeah, the barrel's invulnerable. There should be another walker coming up momentarily. Oh, I wasn't trying to do a slide, I was trying to jump. I didn't get as much health uh, restored there as I wanted. Well, actually not restored, because another interesting thing about this game that's very different from convention is that you have no health cap. Uh, or at least, I don't, I've don't. i never seen the health cap. For all I know, it, it could be a 300 or 999 or something, but uh, I think during normal play you probably won't see it. So at any time in a stage, picking up health is useful, even if you have just started. If you're over your starting health at the end of a stage, you don't get to carry that over to the next stage, so it's not like you can really build up more than what you get in one stage. One more walker. I think that's the last one. The one that comes right as you reach the fortress or whatever uh, in the background. Okay, now that must be the last one. I was being careful, because I knew that last time I played this I was wrong about what was the last one. What? Okay, I was way wrong. <laughs> Unless they're on the timer or something, which I don't think they are. Anyway, we're at over 200 health, which is good. Big out boss fight. It's one of the less harmful pranks of the game. And this is our final battle with Smash Daisuke. First phase is pretty similar to when you fight him in Orange's stage. He flies around on his jetpack and drops bombs. He now has this charge attack as well. Oops. Yeah, usually uh, I try to stay on the ground and slide towards him when he does it, like that. If he's low enough to hit you, you'll still safely pass through and just do some damage in addition. So during this phase, he has two attacks. Well, two types of attack. He has the he follows you around and does the kick, or he backs away and fires his pistol. And the pistol can fire two shots, or two types of shots. There's the double sine wave, and then there's the low sine wave or the the following one so the lower one actually will if you try to jump over it it will arc up towards you and if you try to duck under it it will stay low there is a safe distance which i think i'm at right now where you're safe from both attacks as long as you're crouching 
it's not strictly a safe spot because it's your distance from the boss himself and it's a little bit hard to read. I kind of use the lines on the ground as a gauge, but they're pretty far apart. Alright, we're coming in strong to stage 6. And Flame Chaser is usable for this stage, but I really prefer uh, Flame and Lightning or Double Lightning. Double Lightning is really my weapon of choice for the next stage. I don't think we're going to get it because I think there's only one weapon pickup at the beginning. And then only one midway through the stage. <clears throat> but if I have to use Flame Chaser, that's fine. Uh, double Force is also good. This is a place where just a straight weapon, straight fire weapon is good. Lightning Chaser would also work, but I, I prefer to use Flame Chaser over that, just because of damage. <clears throat> and now our health capacity is up to 200. As we move into the shoot 'em up stage. And for this stage, you have a reverse style option, like in Image Fight or Glade Lancer. Hmm, no, I'm not gonna take Double Flame. I will take Star Chaser, though. Alright, so now I don't even have to worry about using the reverse fire of the ship. Uh, when I say it works like Image Fight or Glade Lancer, <clears throat> I mean that... Oh, actually, no. It's it's not reverse fire. It's uh, lock. Uh, like a locking aimed shot, basically, or a strafing shot. Where whatever direction you move in, that blue cannon on the side of the ship will point and fire. And then... Once you press the attack button, as long as you hold it, it will lock in. Continue firing that direction. For a homing weapon, it's pretty insignificant. Here's another just really bizarre score uh, gimmick, and this is one of the places that breaks the scoring system. This fight with Timeron. I can kill him at any point, pretty much instantly, or I can wait, and essentially, essentially what you're doing is tick point milking here. Uh, the higher the timer value is when the boss is killed, the larger the score bonus. Problem is, uh, I believe it goes to 99 minutes and um, 60 seconds. And for all I know, it might go to 99.99. And yeah. I should look up on YouTube if there's... Uh, I'm sure someone has done the max value of this before. Uh, they probably did it even before YouTube existed. I'm going to see if I can get to five minutes just for laughs and to show you how it evolves, basically. It's very easy uh, at the beginning. So, like... There's not really... See, the thing is, you don't get anything for points. And, and like I said, because the score is open-ended and you can milk infinitely basically anywhere in the game, like, there's no point in getting an okay score on stuff like this. You either go all the way or not at all. And I've done it up... I've done this up to 10 minutes before getting bored. And even at that point, I still had plenty of health left. So I guess what I'll say is we'll go to five minutes, or if I drop to 150 health, I'll end it. But yeah, it's um, it's pretty silly. This is just how much fun Treasure had making games. You can uh, just tell from stuff like this that. They were like, wouldn't it be hilarious if... Hey, Peppa has gone. Got here just for the exciting part. And, oh yeah, you have a dash. I didn't use that at all yet. Okay, I just took a couple hits. I'm down to 160 health now, so let's end it.
anyway, the bullets progressively become faster and uh, more dense. Alright, so yeah, this is the... I would like to switch to uh, Lightning Chaser if I can. I think that there's a weapon pickup coming up soon. Because from here on, Star Chaser is actually on the weak side for the stage. And there's some enemies that are going to be... Yeah, of course, just give me another Chaser, why don't you? There's some enemies that are like these uh, larger ships that kind of take a while to kill with this weapon. So again, if I had been playing it really safe, I would have just stayed with Flame Chaser at the beginning of this stage, or I would have properly set up to get Double Lightning. But it's fun to have some variety. Oh, I always forget what's coming next at that part. Yeah, so now we've got the sort of backward scrolling part. These lasers and a decent amount of the attacks in this stage have knockback, which is probably the most un like aspect of this stage and, and can be a little bit annoying. I think there's maybe only one more weapon pickup in the stage. We're about halfway through it. I think you go back to the back of the battleship and then we'll move up to the front of it one more time. Well, Star Chaser works really well for this part. I didn't realize that. The thing is, you can knock these asteroids around, but once you hit them once and send them off into a different direction, they're then locked into that direction. So they're not as dynamic as they seem. I don't know what this attack is. It must be one of those things that they... I'm sure they shoot bullets in hard mode. Uh, one of those reasons why I say I think that hard is probably the definitive version of the game. Because every once in a while there's stuff in normal where it's like, shouldn't something else be happening here? Alright, here's a mid-boss. Big cannon. <laughs> yeah, Fantasy Zone has them too. The uh, the Zakos that warp in in a circle around you. Although in in uh, the case of uh, Fantasy Zone, they work the same as Salamander. They close in on you. They don't fly out. <laughs> so yeah, that's pretty easy sub boss. This part's kind of a fake out, but um, actually, I gotta get up here and kill these turrets. They're actually just... The uh, popcorn here is really just screwing with my homing attacks. Alright, lightning chaser. I'll take it. Star chaser did a good job for the stage, though. Wasn't anything to be worried about. So yeah, the downside to Lightning Chaser for most of the stage... Uh, I'm okay with it at the end here, because it's going to be good for the boss fight. But the downside to it for most of the stage is that with the amount of simultaneous enemies, you know, all these popcorn enemies, uh, Lightning Chaser kind of takes forever to kill them, because it has to move from one to another. Even though it's doing a lot of damage, the thing is, they get killed, you know, popcorn enemies get killed in one hit. So needing to kill them one at a time actually is a big disadvantage compared to a uh, weapon that can, uh, like, force, uh, which is a machine gun, and it's firing 10 bullets a second and can kill that many per second. Alright, so here we have the refight with uh, 7 Force. Maybe a little underwhelming, I don't know. On one hand, this is a very easy fight, and feels like 7 Force deserves better. On the other hand, it's kind of satisfying to come back after, you know, fighting in the mine, like it's this giant transforming robot, and then you come back in space, see the same enemy, 
Except now you're in a giant spaceship and get to fight him. And dominate. So, that's kind of cool. And I like that the... Each of the forms has attacks that are you know, similar or based on attacks that it had in the previous fight. But are uh, reworked for this more... This open screen, basically. Alien Soldier, yeah, Seven Force and Alien Soldier. Now that is a uh, uh, a final battle. Okay, good. Now we can get back, if I pick it up correctly, just pick it up in the right order. I just want Flame Chaser. They're both here. It's so stupid. Alright. That's Flame Chaser. Uh, let me just think for a minute. Make sure that this is the weapon that I want. Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think we're going to take this for the rest of the game. Again, uh, Flame Lightning. The Lightning Sword would also be fine from here. And uh, Lightning Chaser is actually fine from here as well. It's mostly just the stage 6 during the actual stage part of it that I don't want. And this is, by the way, still stage 6. Uh, 7 Force is not the... that's just a mid-boss. Huh. Flame Chaser doesn't work well for this section. Didn't realize that. That's why we have melee moves. One of the things you realize when you're using fixed shot type, um, and I found more so when I was using Flame Chaser, is that, uh, well, specifically, the melee moves are a good complement for the chaser weapons. Because while the chaser is off doing damage to something, or, uh, you know, if it is taking a while to get to your target, you can just melee them. Alright, so this is a three-phase boss fight. This is probably the hardest phase, believe it or not. It's just, like... It's you, it's the exact same speed as you, and it keeps up with you. <laughs> so, you need to dodge at exactly the moment that it drops. Also, that final drop after its life is out can also hurt you. This second phase is pretty trivial. This 3D effect, by the way, looks really good uh, if you've got, uh, well, presumably on a CRT. I'm not sure I've seen it on one, but on a CRT or just if you're using a CRT filter, this uh, looks really impressive. I'm not using that today because I'm recording this playthrough, hopefully to upload as 1cc, and um, recording quality with CRT filters just never comes out good. The video encoding is not made for that. And here's the final phase of the fight. Giant Runner. This whole fight is pretty similar to something that happens in Dynamite Heady. Oh, that was high. Alright, let's see if we can uh, do the melee strap for this guy. Maybe. Alright, so he spins three times. One, two, three... One, two, three. One, two. Oops, that was a little too close. One, two, three. It's too far that time. One, two, three. What are you doing? It's coming off the screen now. One, two, three. Stop backing up. Two, three. I've never seen him do this, or he just hangs out at the back of the screen. <laughs> Ah, uh, now he's coming forward and I'm being too aggressive. Alright, we're just gonna... I think I'm gonna finish him off the old-fashioned way. Two, three... Do one kick. The end of it. But yeah, you... You know, that's an example of where... You know, you have a, a lot of hit points in this game. And you can definitely die... Uh, quickly but not suddenly the same way you can do in a game like Contra like if you don't know what's going on 
you take a lot of damage in the course of five to ten seconds, but one single mistake is never going to be game over. Um, and I appreciate that. And I also appreciate that you're never going to lose weapons from taking a hit. Um, it's one of the things that's always most difficult to deal with in Contra. So here they've really given us the perfect weapon choice. It's, it's giving me more pause than it should. Uh, normally it would be easy, but these are all of the best weapons. Uh, I could do uh, Lightning Chaser. I could do Lightning Sword. I could do uh, Flame Chaser, but we're going to stick with Flame Chaser. Uh, honestly, I think the Treasures games only work if uh, they have hit points. Uh, their designs are way too chaotic to really uh, be anything but infuriating to play in a one-hit context. That's why I think that they shoot them up to their worst games. Like, Ikaruga and Radiant Silvergun could be awesome games if they just change the balance of them, but uh, instead, it's just you have to make three mistakes in an extremely chaotic system. Like, no thank you. <laughs> Talk about uh, slot machine gaming. <laughs> Still need to get around those or get around to those? I know that's probably a typo, but I'm working on getting around them. How can I interact with these games without ever having to play them? I like a mod for Ikaruga that added HP and, uh, you know, just like two or three hit points or shield system, maybe. Maybe when you charge up. The, uh, the special attack, uh, you charge up a shield. Maybe the shield would only last for like five seconds, but still charge it up. Um, and then, uh, let's see, the other thing you could add to an arrange of that game is an extra button. So you can have a black and white button instead of a swap polarity button. I hate having the swap polarity button. I just want one button for each attack type. <laughs> it's... Like, like they did with Silver Gun, where they did a seven-button mode, like the Saturn mode. Like, that's great. Seven buttons is too fucking many, but <laughs> Ikaruga only has two attack types, so just give me two buttons. Alright, Pink Lobster here. I just need to... Kind of stay under it. And yeah, I had mentioned earlier about my thumb getting tired when using this weapon, and it's uh, bosses like this uh, that are the reason for that, where I kind of just have to, like, scribble. It just mash the D-pad in all directions to keep the projectile in one spot. <clears throat> yeah, well, I mean, the thing about Ikaruga and Silver Gun, I think, is that they're games you either figure out yourself or you shouldn't play. And I mean, uh, also, I shouldn't really give advice on how to play them, because I don't like either one of them. But, like, they... If you just watch someone else's route and copy it, it doesn't seem like there's anything to the games. Like, or, or you just... You're missing out on the potential of experimenting with all the weapons and stuff. Silver Gun definitely has a lot more potential for that than Ikaruga. Although that does uh, have quite a variety of different strats that you can do. It's just that it's not fun to learn the game because everything you do, just like, if you're off... It's just impossible to interpret what would have happened. Oh, oh why was that a slide? Nah, it's not that big a deal. It's just one health item. But yeah, or if Ikaru wasn't an auto-scroller, I think it would also work. There was a 
uh, certainly not the same quality of game design, but there was a Ikaruga platformer that I played. It's called like Outland or something. It was on Xbox 360, Xbox Live Arcade, I guess. And that was actually a lot of fun because it was Ikaruga, but it's not an auto scroller, so that you can sort of set up the timing uh, for when you've got all those moving attacks that you need to synchronize with, synchronize your button presses with. But yeah, the, the whole game is like, if you miss one action, your entire rhythm is thrown. And like, I mean, obviously, if you have better rhythm than I do, which which wouldn't be hard, you can recover for that. But like, uh, I remember when I was, as a kid, like learning, instru learning to play instruments, like guitar. Like, if I missed one note, it was off rhythm, I could never recover the rhythm again. Like, I just didn't know how to do that. <laughs> hey, Dells, how's it going? Attracted by the site of Mega Drive. Alright, so black is next. Yeah, we're, we're not going to change weapons. I need to stop thinking about that. Good, glad you're uh, doing well. Okay, so for black, the first section is just uh, platforming elevator, and if you have a weapon that's strong enough, you can actually kill the obstacles that he spawns. Uh, lightning chaser works really well for this, but flame chaser, as long as you're good at holding it in location, also does a good job. Now he's going to do a washing machine. This rotating pattern. And you can stand on top of him. You can also do a slide kick when you're standing on top of him. Does a good amount of damage. And yeah, he's he's probably the easiest of the refights here. Uh, orange is the hardest, but I had no issue with it today. And pink is pretty easy too. And green is like medium. He's pretty dependent on weapon, I think. And you really want to be using the stun lock to deal with him. Or not stun lock, but the hit stun. Like, you want to attack until he's stunned and then reposition yourself for the next attack. I've never seen him do that three way star spread before. You must only do that if you're a certain distance away. Yeah, Flame Chaser just kind of owns his stars, which are presumably the star in Gunstar. Since green is the third Gunstar. The guns are good, the stars are bad. Alright, almost done. Another uh, trick that's pretty useful for... Uh, this boss fight in particular, but a few of them with the Flame Chaser, is you can just ram it into the ground and it just stays still in a single spot. Uh, so for a boss that's standing still uh, on the ground, you can just keep damage on them that way. Alright, green is dead. And now on to gold and silver, the final boss. You do not get a health recharge before this. You only get one health item. So when you haven't yet learned the game, this is definitely an obstacle. And the length of this game, and um, in particular these last few stages, is part of what makes this hard to learn uh, without like save states. Which I think is why... Or, or, yeah, it's just kind of tedious. Uh, not kind of, like very tedious to learn this game. Um, you do have the continues, but uh, still with the long stages, just like playing this back in the day, it's part of what I didn't like about it, was that I just felt like I had no mechanism for learning it. Okay, that's not the right way to do this. So you need to play defensively while he does that attack. It's been a couple days since I did this fight. <clears throat> so you're attacking the gems, not the robot. 
can throw them also, but I don't know that it serves any purpose. Okay. Just remembered what the real way to do this fight is. You attack the gem gems and jump kick the robot. Ah, come on. Because you do have uh, that invulnerability during a jump kick. Alright, so now he starts attacking with the gems once he gets down to 3,000. And each of the gems is a different attack based on the weapon that its color matches. And the fight's all already over, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> I came into that with enough HP. Like, when I was practicing that the other night, I was practicing it with 50 HP. And the only weapons I was able to do it with were Flame Chaser and Lightning Chaser. Um, but with the jump kick strategy, it wasn't too bad. I forgot about the jump kick strategy till halfway through the fight here, but I knew that coming in with that much health, there wasn't that much to worry about. So that's a, like, if you just take a little time to practice that game with save states, I think it's pretty easy. It's on par with the counter games at the same time. Or I'd say it's on par with Japanese hardcore, which I think is easier than Contra 3. But either way, you know, just standard run and gun difficulty. Something you can take at your own pace and you can learn a, a pretty good script for. This one is quite a bit more dynamic and has a much higher skill ceiling than other running guns, which is why I think I would like to do a clear on hard mode. Uh, I'm going to give it a try right now, as a matter of fact. Uh, but it is a bit harder. Yeah, I didn't mention this at the beginning, but uh, I was playing this with the sprite limit turned off on the emulator and also with overclocking so that there wasn't any slowdown. There would be a bit of slowdown. The sprite flicker is not too bad. I don't really know what's happening in the story because in the English version, the text is so incomplete that like it barely makes sense. I know that Green sacrificed himself to kill gold and silver. Treasure likes heroic sacrifices at the end of their games. I guess it's just kind of an anime thing. I gotta look at... Uh, it'll be interesting when I look at the segment times when I upload this to YouTube. Because uh, I used to think that stages 5, 6, and 7 were obscenely long, but they don't feel long at all anymore. I can't tell if it's just because I know how to play the game, or if it, I was overestimating them before because those are the stages where I'd end up needing to continue. But yeah, learning the different weapon types, which weapon works with which character type, that's very important. Like, knowing <clears throat> when you really need to switch, and also when you need to plan ahead for a switch, like knowing when the drops come. Because you're a bit more flexible with the weapon types than you are with in a Contra game, because there's so many more of them, and because of the mixing system. But you also don't get fixed drops like you do in Contra. So when you're playing Contra 3, you know when your spreads are coming. And um, and you're playing hardcore, like, <laughs> you can just be pretty safe, you know, when you're playing the Japanese version, you're pretty safe knowing that you're never going to lose a weapon, and when you're about to lose a weapon, you've got a good warning for it, and you can just switch to the one you don't need. Uh, here, the randomization of the drops makes it more dynamic from playthrough to playthrough, but, yeah, if you're a boring player, you would just pick one weapon at the beginning and stick with it through the entire game. Uh, does it not progress past the screen? <laughs> that does. Finally. Anyway, what a masterpiece. Now, let's try hard.